Okay, this week's story is Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. By looking at the cover and thinking about the title, do you guys think this book is going to be fiction or nonfiction? Okay, great. You think it's fiction? It is. As we read, I want you all to think about the vocabulary words that we just defined in our activity and pay attention to the way that they're used in this story. All right, let's get started. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs by Judy Barrett. We were all sitting around the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was squeezing oranges for juice, Henry and I were betting on how many pancakes we could eat, and Grandpa was doing the flipping. Seconds later, something flew through the air headed toward the kitchen ceiling and landed right on Henry. After we realized that the flying object was only a pancake, we all laughed, even Grandpa. Breakfast continued quite uneventfully. All the other pancakes landed in the pan, and all of them were eaten, even the one that landed on Henry. That night, touched off by the pancake incident at breakfast, Grandpa told us the best tall tale bedtime story he'd ever told. Is the tall tale real or make-believe? Can you say it's make-believe? Great job. Across an ocean, over lots of huge, bumpy mountains, across three hot deserts, and one smaller ocean, there lay the tiny town of Chew and Swallow. In most ways, it was very much like any other town. It had a main street lined with stores, houses with trees and gardens around them, a schoolhouse, about 300 people, and some assorted cats and dogs. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. Why do you think there were no food stores in this town? You think the people don't eat? Okay, that's possible. You say the food falls from the sky? Have you watched the movie? <laughs> okay. They didn't need any. The sky supplied all the food they could possibly want. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day, at breakfast, at lunch, and at dinner. Everything that everyone ate came from the sky. Whatever the weather served, that was what they ate. But it never rained rain, it never snowed snow, and it never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice, it snowed mashed potatoes and green peas, and sometimes the wind blew in storms of hamburgers. You see, there's a storm of hamburgers, isn't it? The people could watch the weather report on television in the morning, and they would hear a prediction for the next day's food. When the townspeople went outside, they carried their plates, cups, glasses, forks, spoons, and knives with them. That way they would always be prepared for any kind of weather. If there were leftovers, and there usually were, the people took them home and put them in the refrigerator in case they got hungry in between meals. The menu varied. By the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down. After a brief shower of orange juice, low clouds of sunny side up eggs moved in, followed by pieces of toast, butter, and jelly sprinkled down for the toast and most of the time it rained milk afterwards. For lunch one day, hot dogs, already in their roll, blew in from the northwest about five miles an hour. There were mustard clouds nearby, then the wind shifted to the east and brought in baked beans. A drizzle of soda finished off the meal. Dinner one night consisted of lamb chops, becoming heavy at times with occasional ketchup. Periods of peas and baked potatoes were followed by gradual clearing, with a wonderful jello setting in the west. The sanitation department of Chew and Swallow had a rather unusual job for a sanitation department. It had to remove the food that fell on the houses and sidewalks and lawns. The workers cleaned up things after every meal and fed the dogs and cats. Then they emptied some of it onto the surrounding ocean for the fish and turtles and whales to eat. The rest of the food was back into the earth, so that the soil would be richer for the people's flower gardens. Life for the townspeople was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worst. What do you think might happen since the weather's getting worse? You think it won't rain food anymore? That's possible. You think a hurricane's gonna come? That's bad weather. Okay, let's find out. One day there was nothing but gorgonzola cheese all day long. The next day there was only broccoli, all overcooked. And the next day there were Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. Yuck. Another day there was a pea soup fog. 
No one could see where they were going, and they could barely find the rest of the meal that got stuck in the fog. The food was getting larger and larger, and so were the portions. The people were getting frightened. Violent storms blew up frequently. Awful things were happening. One Tuesday, there was a hurricane of bread and rolls all day long and into the night. There were soft rolls and hard rolls, some without seeds, some with seeds. There was white bread and rye bread and whole wheat toast. Most of it was larger than the bread and rolls that they'd ever seen before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors, roofs were damaged, and the sanitation department was beside itself. The mess took the workers four days to clean up, and the sea was full of floating rolls. To help out, the people piled as much bread as they could in their backyards. The birds helped pick at it a bit, but it just stayed there and got staler and staler. And stale is one of our vocabulary words. Does anybody remember what it means? Good, it means old, not fresh. Great job. There was a storm of pancakes one morning and a downpour of maple syrup that nearly flooded the town. A huge pancake covered the school. No one could get it off because it's weight, so they had to close the schools. Lunch one day brought 15-inch drifts of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick and had a stomach ache. There was an awful salt and pepper wind accompanied by an even worse tomato tornado. People were sneezing themselves silly and running to avoid the tomatoes. The town was a mess. There were seeds and pulps everywhere. The sanitation department gave up. The job was just too big. Everyone feared for their lives. They couldn't go outside most of the time. Many houses had been badly damaged by giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up and there was no more schools for the children. What do you guys think they might do to solve this problem? Anybody have any ideas? You think they may go somewhere else? Or you think they're going to try to repair this town? Okay, you say they're going to repair it? All right, let's find out. So a decision was made to abandon the town of Chew and Swallow. It was a matter of survival. The people glued together the giant pieces of stale bread sandwich style with peanut butter, to the absolute, took the absolute necessities with them, and set sail on their rafts for a new land. After being afloat for a week, they finally reached the small coastal town which welcomed them. The bread had held up surprisingly well, well enough for them to build temporary houses for themselves out of it. The children began school again, and the adults all tried to find new places for themselves in the new land. The biggest change they had to make was getting used to buying food at the supermarket. They found it odd that the food was kept on shelves, packaged in boxes, cans, and bottles. Meat that had to be cooked was kept in large refrigerators. Nothing came down from the sky except rain and snow. The clouds above their heads were not made of fried eggs. And no one ever got hit in the head by a hamburger again. And nobody dared to go back and chew and swallow to find out what had happened to it. They were too afraid. Henry and I were awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I remember his good night kiss. The next morning, we woke up to see, fall see snow falling outside our window. We ran downstairs for breakfast and ate it a little faster than usual so we could go sledding with Grandpa. It's funny, but even as we were sliding down the hill, we thought it was a, we thought we saw a great pat, giant pat of butter at the top, and we could almost smell mashed potatoes. The end. What do you think the butter and the mashed potatoes actually was? They said it snowed, so what do you think that is? A snowy hill, right? Okay, and what, what's that? We see it every day. The sun. Good job. Did you all like this story? Good. I did too. Now that we've read the story and we know that it's fiction, what do you think the author's purpose was for writing this story? Remember, what are your three types of author's purpose? To entertain, persuade, and inform. All right, which one would this be? Was it to persuade someone to do something? No. Nah. Did it inform you about something? But was it a fun story to read? Absolutely. So you think it's to entertain? All right. Great job, guys.